work. This is the workbook online course, and we're looking at chapter three, managing your activity, not your results. And what that means, the purpose of this 21-day habit formation is that you focus on an activity and not the results, because if you're so focused on the results, then you'll get discouraged. So we're going to talk about, you know, roller coaster emotions and developing a habit and um, all those kind of things in this webinar today. The purpose of the Success Habits Workshop is the workbook is to develop a plan. You got to know where you're going, know what you control, so you're not trying to control things that are out of your control. And it's kind of like if you tell a fish to climb a tree his whole life, the fish will think it's a failure because a fish can't climb a tree. So if you're being told, go to an appointment and get that group, get that sale, you don't really control that. So you can become better, you can, you can do a lot of those kind of things, but you need to make sure that what you're focused on, the activities going to 20, our third chapter, 21 Day Habit Formation, are activities you control. So we're kind of moving from chapter two to chapter three. You've learned what you control. Now how do you do that into 21 Day Habits and what is the purpose of a 21 Day Habit for, Formation? That moves us on through the rest of the chapters and the end goal is that we are going to create a new normal. Now let me explain the new normal. Now Ms. Brielle Hoffman is here today, the newest Legal Shield um, ring earner, the youngest woman in Legal Shield history to receive the $100,000 ring. She is our live, she's here live sitting with me um, to share with you this book, this process, this new normal, this, these steps that you're learning literally are the things that catapulted her into the success she's having. And so she, not, there's nothing better than to take what you've been learning and let's, let's go back to the very beginning of this 23-year-old coming out of a ministry school with no sales background. Six years she was down in Birmingham, Alabama, moved back to Knoxville, Tennessee, doesn't really have a contact start from scratch, literally never sold anything, never made a presentation. All she had inside of her was that this product is awesome and what this product did for her personal family. That's the root. That was the foundation she had. Satisfied customer, which is what we talk about all the time. That's the number one thing. And so um, seeing that we talked about understanding what we control last week and this week we're talking about managing your activity, not your results. I'm going to start with this. Brielle Hoffman. Um, welcome to the call, Brielle. Good morning, everyone. Your first 30 days, 60 days, you went out there your first 30 days, let's talk about your first 30 days, and you didn't use this, you remember? And so you didn't have the greatest success because what, um, what did you, and because you couldn't actually see what you were doing in a week at a glance and using the PDA, which is kind of your snapshot of your real, this is looking in the mirror. When you put down every appointment, presentation, activity on this PDA, then you're looking in the mirror, and this is in the book, okay? Um, when you don't use this, which you didn't use it your first month, what happened in your first month that you didn't really realize you were doing that had that caused you to have a hard time getting Performance Club qualified? Well, first of all, I kind of joke um, coming to this business, like my mom said, I didn't really have much of a sales background. But for whatever reason, I just felt like I knew more than my parents. Um, <laughs> Maybe you have a child that feels like they know more than you, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I've, I've apologized many times since then. But I did a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have done in my first month. Uh, I remember telling my parents that all, all I was going to do was cold call. Uh, I wasn't going to talk to Warm Market, which was a complete stupidity because everything, a lot of my successes really only come from um, Warm Market. I've cold called, you know, really not at all. Long story short is, not using the PDA uh, did not help me be accountable to uh, my activity. So long story short is my first month of the business, I, I talked to five people in hopes that those five people would sign up. Thankfully they did, but that was miserable because it was miserable for them and it was miserable for me. My last membership came um, at 11 o'clock on the last night of the month, or last, yeah, the last night of the month, and that, that was not a good feeling. So. There was no way for me to be accountable to my goals via the habits that I was trying to set to reach those goals if I wasn't using the PDA. Into my first month, 
uh, there was a lack of accountability because I did not uh, stick to the system. All right, so in your first 21 day, in your first month, or we say 21 day habit formation, what that means is once she realized, I can remember she came in and we're, we're having this talk and I said, Brielle, where's your PDA? Well, I don't need to use that. And she was kind of like, I go, honey, I, this is our system. This is what we use. This is going to build a foundation. This is going to build a, the right habit. And so I need you to commit to the system and trust me. And so she's like, okay. And so we got it out. I kind of went through the value of it to her life. It wasn't about her reporting to me. It was about her, you know, actually seeing her reality of her week. And so she, when you moved over, you started to use it. And, it, and so at first it's weird. You don't really have it as your 21 day. You don't have it as your new normal. And so she started to use it. Maybe you forgot a couple days and you went back and then you forgot a couple days and then you went back. And finally, by week two, you, you're committed. This is her new habit. She's going to record everything on this. This is going to be how she lives her week out of this, this form. Then it became like life to you. Can you explain the transformation there? Yeah, and I also want to say something real quick. This just came to mind. The reason why I didn't use it initially is because I knew myself I wasn't doing the activity that was going to produce the results that I wanted. So I felt like a failure almost, um, which I don't know if you've been there before, but um, you know that was kind of an eye opener for me. So I was I was kind of almost you know running from that because I. Um, you know, I, I didn't like the fact that I wasn't I wasn't doing what I needed to do, and I knew that deep down, and the PDA kind of revealed that to me. But long story short is when I decided, it kind of, my first month, after my first month, a lot of things changed for me. You know, I went from, you know, the conviction of, golly, I need to make a sale to, you know, make a commission to, I need to make a sale to protect a family, or, or my goal is mission marketing. When I changed from that to using the PDA and using the system, everything changed. I could not winning on the PDA because I knew what to expect and I loved because I would I remember and I still to this day I would print out a PDA really for two months in advance um, if it was a, if it was three four months in advance so I set an appointment I just put it in my my calendar and then I'd you know as it got closer put it on my PDA but I remember printing off two months worth of PDAs I loved putting the dates in there I loved you know putting in my non-negotiables so Sundays you know I don't typically work because that's Sabbath day, you go to church, you know, whatever, you know, workouts, different things like that. And I loved being able to fill an appointment. Every time I filled in an appointment, it was like, you've got this, you can do this, Brielle. And it was, it was kind of a, a reminder of the habits that I'm setting out to accomplish in order to get to my goal. And not, not really knowing what, uh, where it would all take me per se. Like some of the different, um, you know, I had, this is just came up. Um, I had a, someone message me on Facebook recently and said, you know, hey, Brielle, I, I don't even know who the person is, but hey, Brielle, my name is so-and-so, and I'm out of, um, I think they're out of Texas, and you know, I'm really I'm really trying to approach pastors, and I would really love if you called me and helped me out. And I'm like thinking, man, you know, I've never in my entire business tried to approach a certain person or set of individuals. What I've done is strictly and solely get out in the marketplace and try to educate as many people as possible and just be prepared from a professional and educative standpoint to be able to best serve whoever that potential client might be, whether it's a small business owner, whether it's a recruit, whether it's an employee benefits specialist, whether it's an HR director. And because of that, I've been able to build a business exponentially versus linearly. You know, a lot of us have gone back and forth between the linear and exponential thinking. The exponential thinking is where we need to be, and that's completely changed my business. But getting back to the PDA, that's where it all began. When I started to make a habit of the PDA and be accountable to the PDA to really reflect on my activity in order to get to my goals, it changed everything for me. Okay, and then you were managing your activity with the PDA, and then you did the R3 at every presentation, and that's where everything blew up. So as you're going through, you mentioned our second habit that you're developing, and it's 21 days. is isn't your first 21 days, by the way. This is like whatever your habit is that you're really needing to work on, commit to it, all out massive action. That's your habit. That's what you're going to change. You've got to do it for 21 days, and then at the end of that, it's kind of a new normal. So when she started the PDA, she was up and down and all around a little bit, and then she was, but she was committed. She said this 
needs to be my new normal. This is what I need to do so that my team does it. So that I, that I have the leadership, the example, the reality. And I love the fact that you said you got so excited. So you're managing your activity, and that activity was presentations. Where you could fill in that PDA with all those presentations. Now, as you're filling in your PDA with all your presentations, and then you go out, um, another thing we don't control when we do a presentation is a yes or a no. So in the very beginning, here's the roller coaster of the day of the different emotions you can have as you're building your business. You have highs and lows and highs and lows and good days and smooth days and drop downs and, whoa, that appointment was good. Man, that appointment was bad. Whoa, that appointment was good. Whoa, that appointment was bad. And those kind of things are happening. That's what's going to happen. And there's no way to get around that. And real quick, for all of the, for those of you out there that can relate to this roller coaster of emotions thing, that was me for a while. I mean, probably the first couple months, I cried a whole lot more than I cry now. <laughs> um, I mean, it has to do with me being a female too. But, you know, I, I remember getting rejected and thinking, like, I mean, still to this day, I think, how can you turn this service down? You've got to be kidding me. But, you know, I remember getting beat up a lot more than I do now. And and getting beat up, I think I got beat up more back in the beginning of my business and, and I felt rejected more because I didn't have enough in the pipeline to support my goals. So when I was told no, it was like, oh, how am I going to make it to ED? Or, you know, you know, it was, um, it, it kind of shot me down as far as, you know, getting to my goals. So later, you know, as I grew in my business and grew as a, you know, a leader, I filled my pipeline up so much to where, you know, a no still hurts, but it didn't hurt like it did in the beginning of my business because I had so much activity going on that I was like, you know what, if it's not a good time for you, then we'll just, you know, take care of you a couple months or, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you uh, later. So um, make sure that you are obviously, as you know, you know, filling up your pipeline with activity because that, that helps resolve a lot of things. So the way that you manage your emotion was a huge, huge pipeline didn't have power over you. Yeah, the right mindset and then lots of activity. All right, so another way to, to manage your emotions is to create a passionate purpose. And this is in the book, and this is what drives your habits. And I'm going to tell a story about Grielle when she was having a really tough time going out. And what she would do is she'd walk into an appointment, and she would have <clears throat> someone with a negative attitude. Oh, this is Legal Shield. I've heard of that company. And it would be like <gasps> this, this feeling inside of her like, oh, you know, they're just negative and they're not interested. And, and so I sat her down and I said, Brielle, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through this process. Um, what, what do you want? Well, I want to let them know about the, the product. What thing must you do to get to the goal that they know about the service? Well, I need to get an appointment. Okay, who are you doing it for? The people out in the marketplace. What do they want or need? Well, they want protection. They want to save money, but they, and that's what they need, but they don't know about it. So how do they benefit as a result of what you do for them? And so what the, the purpose of my little conversation with Riel is when you walk in the door and they think they know, my question to Brielle was, do they really know, K-N-O-W, about what we offer? And she says, no, they don't. And I said, okay, what is your purpose then for coming into that company or going to that individual family? What is your purpose? Is, and then she said, explaining you know, the real deal, the real truth about all that we offer in the service. And I said, now, do they benefit? when they finally really actually understand what we really do, <laughs> do they benefit? And Brielle's like, absolutely. And I said, so when they think they know, but they don't know, and they go without our service because they think they know, but they don't know, so they conclude, they have a conclusion that's wrong, and you go in, even if they're ugly, if their attitude is wrong, and you are on a mission, instead of thinking about how they're about their attitude, about their rejection, about that, you persevere. You push past that because it is better for them that you push past and you allow them to see the real truth about the product, set them free from their ignorance, you might say. Don't get offended about their, their, their um, conclusion that they came to without maybe from the word legal. They just think it's, oh, if you sue somebody. They, they don't even know what they're talking about, right? So she realized, oh my gosh, I do something for them. Now, they don't know what I do for them because they've concluded something wrong. But if I don't help them to see the truth, then
then they will never understand the value. And literally, that is my life story. A sales rep that came into my, you know, when I was 19 years old and told me about a product, I was, a, I had an attitude. I'm like, no, I'm not interested. That's terrible. And she persevered with me. She kept telling me about the service. I ended up buying it, and it changed my life. I own the largest tanning spas in, in the state of Michigan because a sales rep that came in the door um, kept coming back and, and, and delivering me from my ignorance. And so when I help Brielle realize that's what she's doing, she's not trying to sell them, she's really trying to overcome their ignorance and give them the value because it's a benefit for them. It was a benefit for me that that lady kept coming back to, to um, help me to see the truth that I wasn't able to see because of my really quick conclusion, that I, my, my attitude, okay, as a prospect. And so she realized at that moment she was a mission marketer versus a commission marketer and it kind of propelled her to um, with a good purpose that helped her reach her goal and, and it's an integrity thing and you all know this but I, I won't work with a broker I won't work with a you know insurance agent I won't work with someone that doesn't have the service because there's no way for you to know the benefit to you know potential clients that you might have if you don't have the service and yesterday I was at a, a small company you know blue collar and um, it was kind of funny because they were supposed to know what they were walking in the room for but they many of them did not so I asked them they came in the room I said hey do you guys know what you're in here for and they're like no we really don't and you could just tell you know you know the meetings that uh, with employees where their body language is kind of like you know pretty closed off you know not interested because it's, oh this is just another benefit thing where it's gonna take more money on my paycheck so what I have learned to do is I have learned to just say hey um, here's why we're here. We offer two services. <laughs> You're probably thinking right now, a legal plan? Well, I need a legal plan. Most of us are trained not to use attorneys because they're simply not affordable. And as soon as I just kind of confront the objections that already occur in their mind, it changes everything. And I set them at ease by saying, you know what, the reason why I'm here is, first of all, your employer loves our service and thought it would be a great benefit to you. But also because we've had the service for 17 years and it's saved our family tens of thousands of dollars, but most importantly, time and time is money. So my goal today is to educate you in a service that can protect your time, protect your family, and protect your money. Is that okay with you? And at that point, they're all like, yeah, tell me more. Because there's a conviction there. There's a integrity line up there where I'm not just selling something to get a commission in their eyes. I'm selling something that's personally worked for me. And yesterday, even though they were blue collar, not really knowing what they were in there for, we sold seven out of seven, or I think eight out of eight, small company. Um, but still, they were, by the end of the presentation, where do I sign? This is exactly what I need. Um, so it, it all comes from doing an educative presentation from the right heart with the right um, perspective and obviously knowing what you're there to do. Um, and as the slide says, the right purpose fuels, you know, a goal. So uh, back to you, Mom. All right. So that literally is in her heart as it drives her towards the activity because we manage our activity, not our results. So the way she drives her activity is she focuses on the benefit for them. And that's what I want you all to get from the, this particular habit, is that you're thinking about what you do for them that they don't know you do for them. So when they walked in the room with this attitude and probably look, uh, another salesperson, I don't even want to hear this, and this is a waste of my time, they have all that. This is our job, our job to do what Brielle did, to confront their attitude with the truth. And that when she said, you probably don't even know what you're here for, but let me tell you, and then she connected with them, and then they were like, wow, it opened them up, they were able to receive it. So there's an example of the importance of that fueling your drive with the right purpose. And the purpose is what you do for them, okay? Not what you do for yourself. If you're thinking about what you do for yourself, that's really ugly, and that was your first month. Okay, so going on to the next habit. Um, well, actually, um, it's, kind of a, it's kind of an overview, kind of an umbrella over all habits, and that is, are you in line with success principles? The reality is, if I'm in Japan and I drop a pencil, gravity's going to drop that to the ground. If I'm in, you know, um, Maui and I drop a pencil, gravity's going to drop it to the ground. Gravity is a principle. I can say I don't believe in gravity. I don't really care about gravity. I don't think it works. Well, that's, you know, that's kind of foolish to think gravity isn't operating all the time, anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are, what you think you are. Gravity is a principle, and so you need to work with gravity. You need to see how can I overcome gravity, or, or um, that's called a principle. Now, the law of the harvest, you reap what you sow, is a principle. 
So Brielle, on this particular um, slide, the concept of her filling her pipeline, you've got it, you, you track your activity, you need to manage your emotion, discipline your disappointments, and now you're looking at the reality of how the world works, the principle of the, the law of the harvest. So in her mind, she knows that the harvest is reserved for the seed. So you can't be a farmer with a huge acre of land that never plants a seed and be looking out there saying, where's my corn, where's my beans, where's my soy? That's never going to happen because that doesn't even make sense. It's not in line with the principle. That farmer needs to plant the seeds in order to reap the harvest. So let's talk about the um, success checkup. You know, are you sowing enough seed? Are you sowing it the right way, in the right soil, with the right care? Now this is in chapter three as well, and this is kind of like, this is what you gotta go to to say, look, you know, if I'm having lack of results, I really need to look at my sowing. To change my harvest, don't be looking at what you want, look at what you're, you control. And that goes back to your um, seed time and then your harvest. So Brielle, can you share about doing the hard right thing over the easy wrong thing. Yeah, I think that's just uh, the bottom line of our business is if you're not willing to get uncomfortable, then um, it'll be hard to reach the goals that you want to reach for yourself, even though nothing is impossible with God. But um, going back to what my mom was saying, the harvest is reserved for the farmer who plants the seed. We're all farmers. I mean, I think that is one of the most perfect parallels to this business. Um, I also wrote down, you can't expect to reap what you don't sow. So a lot of us are expecting, you know, a performance club or a senior director or, you know, ED or, or hoping for that, but we're not sowing the seeds to get there. Once again, we're setting these goals, but our habits aren't, habits aren't lining up with what it's going to take to accomplish those goals. So it's so important that you kind of reflect on this year and think back, the seeds that I plant planted this year, will they produce the results that I'm hoping to produce in my business? When it comes to when it comes to my business, um, I I I got better at this, <laughs> to say the least. I I continually grew in planting the right seeds to get to where um, I, I felt like I wanted wanted to be. Um, and one thing that's really important is you, from the moment you plant a seed until that seed is technically harve harvested, there's a lot that happens in between. If you think about a farmer, um, there's a lot that happens in, you know, those producing those seeds to help grow, you know, a crop or whatever, whether, whether it's the water and the feeding and, the, you know, the different things that take place. And that's the same in our business with the follow-up, with the relationship. You know, I was so dedicated to every time I presented to a potential prospect knowing exactly what was the next step. What was the next step? Gauging their level of interest and knowing what the next step was so I could appropriately follow up. Now, the next step wasn't exactly always what happened. We might have, I might have followed up when they asked me to follow up and they said, oh, I need another week or I need another two weeks or I need another month or whatever the case was. And I always said, no problem. Can I follow back up with you or can I contact you in a month from now? So the follow up and the in between was critical, you know, to accomplishing, you know, a lot of what I have accomplished in my business today. So, um, did I answer the question? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you think of this past year, when you think of the next year, um, the question of are you sowing enough seed? Because maybe the lack of results in your business, if you would like to have seen more results, is because you're simply not sowing enough seeds. Now, um, it, it takes, obviously, getting uncomfortable, as we know. So when it comes to sowing the right seeds, maybe it's doing more networking events. You know, networking events aren't always extremely comfortable because you might walk in not knowing anybody. But the great thing is find a buddy. Find a networking buddy. Find a good person that you uh, is very professional in your city and go take them to networking events with you. You guys have each other. You can go in. You can meet people. Um, so maybe sowing seeds is doing more networking. Maybe it's just simply, you know, setting up one more presentation a day. So you, maybe you've been consistent with two. Maybe you do one more. Um, and then maybe maybe for you, sowing the right seeds is being more effective um, after you sow those seeds in the follow-up. The follow-up is absolutely critical, as we all know. Um, so let's let's be committed to planting more seeds uh, in 2016 to reap a bigger harvest. All right, and what this uh, 
slide says, the right way in the right soil. And what the right soil is, is I, what I see is somebody gets on a conference call in Brielle and they hear, oh my gosh, people are selling you know, small business plans. And they've never owned a business, they've never sold to small business owners, they have no experience there, and all of a sudden they shift and they're going to run towards small business sales. And so that, that soil for them is not really a complement to who they are. So they start planting soil in the small business world without really knowing the product, but just hearing that it makes money. And so um, that would not be the right soil for them. And just like Brielle's like when she started, are you sowing enough seed the right way in the right soil? She wanted to go to the cold market versus the warm market. So her idea was, I'm just going to go to the cold market. And so was that the right soil? So her problem in her lack of production month one was she was going to this soil, this, she was planting a seed in a, in a soil that doesn't, kind of rejects you. Cold market is a high rejection model. And that is, for her, that didn't work. I mean, her emotions, her roller coaster was everywhere. And so there's, the, these are, uh, another thing Brielle, when she kicked off her first month, um, was not a recruiter. Okay? And I, was, I, I started her out, you know, okay, this is what you got to do, recruit, recruit, recruit. And, and she tried it, and it was not a compliment to her. It was not the right soil for her right then. So I, I realized... Well, let me say that, something real quick. The reason why I like recruiting, and I, I, I want to get better at it, is it my strength? Not necessarily. But for me, for whatever reason, I didn't have the conviction yet with, for recruiting because I hadn't experienced level of success that I wanted to have yet. So I, it was hard for me to tell someone in their 30s or 40s with a family, hey, you can make 100 grand a year, you know, because I hadn't really been there. Or you can make 50 grand a year because I hadn't really been there. You know, I was still just kind of working my way up the totem pole. So I, I didn't have that conviction there yet. And, and that that's just me. You know, I'm not saying my mom, you know, she always said, well, Brielle, you have other people's stories. And that's very true. But I had a conviction about the membership. And that's why I rock and rolled with the membership and, and went out there from the consumer base and into group accounts. And that's where I've experienced the most success. So now, you know, I've, I've done more recruiting, more in the B2B realm uh, because that conviction is now there. But um, once again, it just goes back to it was an integrity thing for me and a conviction thing for me. And whatever you are most passionate about relative to this business, if you are a small business owner, you should be killing it in the small business arena. If you come from insurance sales, you should be killing it because that's, that's your where you're at, okay? So to so come from your that integrity spot and that conviction spot and the right things will happen. Well, um, I just want to make sure you understand. She's one of the top recruiters in all of Shield Nation right now. So she's a phenomenal recruiter. But in, in the very beginning, as a coach to Brielle, I needed to see that that wasn't connecting. That soil was not connecting where she was planting seeds. Yet I saw that she, it was connecting in the consumer presentation world. She would go out to a family. She was so convicted. It worked. It was her sweet spot. So this is so important. Please hear me, team out there. Do not assembly line your team. Do not stick them on an assembly line. Look at them as a person. Look at their heart. Look at their sweet spot. Serve their needs. Help them to come into contact with their area of gifting you complement whatever they need to help them grow. <clears throat> so what I saw is I thought, okay, I'm going to focus on what she's great at. And then the R3 turned into, you know, just doing the presentation and the R3, referrals to the power of three, every presentation, who do you know, what companies um, care about their employees and we need help. That just rolled over into natural progression of becoming one of the top recruiters in all of Shield Nation. So you, you don't have to like push somebody into a behavior <clears throat> and plant a seed that's breaking them to where they're going to just quit, all right? So if I didn't adjust her and my coaching style with her, watch her, see her, what she was, um, was uh, having a harvest in, the area of her harvest, and then let her like live in that area, and then eventually the R3 took her to group and took her to recruiting, and all those other things opened the door. That is so key. And I see people like keep telling people, do this, do this, do this, and they're not successful in that thing that they're being told. And they're not really looking at that person as a person and what they're going to um, <clears throat> blossom in, their area, of, um, their sweet spot. So make sure you do that. And then, um, Brielle, on choosing 
a hard right over the easy wrong, <clears throat> when you could go to that networking and you didn't really want to, that was the right thing to do. It was a hard thing to do. You didn't want to go there. It's uncomfortable. <clears throat> you don't know anybody over the easy wrong, which would maybe sleep in. Skip the, you know, six, skip the 7 a.m. networking meeting. Sleep in. That's easy to do, but that's the wrong thing to do to reach your goal. Can you comment on how do you actually get yourself to do the hard right thing over the easy wrong? Yeah, the hard right over the easy wrong, it just goes back to realizing that, you know, the hard right that you're looking to make is in line with your habits to get to your goals. So ultimately, you're the only one that's going to take you there, your decisions, your choices. I realized early on in my business that my parents, um, as great as they are, they weren't going to build my business for me. Um, and so I needed to do it myself. And so um, anything worth it in our lives is going to take hard work. It's going to take um, less sleep and longer hours and, you know, the hard right over the easy and wrong. And so practically speaking, uh, there's just a couple, I mean, there's been many times that a couple examples is, you know, going to a networking event, for instance, there's been times where I had a really long day and there was a networking event at 6 o'clock at night and I did not want to go. I'm sure you've been there. Um, but choosing to go, choosing to have a great attitude about it and choosing to be intentional have led to some of my greatest contacts. Or um, I remember there was a, a broker um, that I was following up with for over a year um, and kept on putting me off and kept on putting me off. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to just drop by and I'm going to bring him some donuts. And so, and I was, I was pretty, it was uncomfortable because dropping by a business, you know, that can be their great thing or it can be not such a great thing. It can be well received or not well received. Anyway, long story short is I walked in and I just said, hey, I was in the area, wanted to stop by and connect, also wanted to drop you guys off a little gift and just say thank you so much for, um, you know, this relationship and what the future holds. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I've been meaning to get in touch with you. Like, and we set an appointment right there. And sure enough, they came on board in just a matter of a few days to, to week. It just was a timing thing. So it's just the willingness to um, be uncomfortable. Uh, there's been many times where I just didn't want to make that follow-up call. I did not want to make that follow-up call. You know, I've, I've followed up several times. I've, you know, I've, I've emailed and just did not want to make another call. Well, I said, Brielle, you can do this. You know, you're, you know, reminding myself of my goals and the habits I committed to, and I made the call. They answered, I am so sorry. I've been meaning to get in touch with you. We want to move forward. So glad I made that call, okay? So it's just, um, you know, reminding yourself of those goals and really why you set those goals in the first place. So it always goes back to the why. You know, is the reason why you set those goals because you're looking to, change the financial future for your family, okay, that's a great driving factor. You know, if you're looking to provide for your kids' colleges or whatever the case is, that's the reason why you set that goal. So it makes that hard right a lot easier um, in light of the goals that will change your future. So make sure you remind yourself of that throughout your time in this business. All right, well, let's just open it up for questions now. Um, how did today's webinar help you? Are there any questions you have for Brielle? Allison Lombard, are you out there? You had your hand raised. There, Allison. I, I think she had her hand raised earlier with a question. So, uh, hey, just real quick, guys, you got to be on the uh, access code and pin code for the audio portion. So, any questions you have, uh, we will reach out to you. So, got to hit. Uh, check mark on that dashboard where the hand is, and we'll come to you. Um, hey, Dad, real quick, let's let's go out to um, let's see, real hey, quick. Brielle, have a, Brielle. Hey, yeah. Brielle, Brielle, real quick before we do that, um, last night we had a Christmas party. Why don't you share the story of Kelly? Because you guys are talking about so many great <laughs> things here, and one of the things that I think is critical is you know you talk about the right seeds being planted in the right soil. Sometimes I hear people kind of prejudge. I, I heard an associate, actually a pretty healthy leader, two weeks ago in a in a uh, conversation we were having some for, for some strategies in 2016, talk about how they were just going to be looking for you know really strong leaders to build their business with. And I'm sitting there thinking they're they're breaking the very rule that we live by, and that's to never prejudge. And 
tell, tell everybody what Kelly shared with us last night, 25-year-old. Um, she has a farm and horses and about the guy cutting her hay. The long story short is you just never know who, um, you know, will be brought into your life for whatever reason. And she had, uh, didn't know this, but a guy kind of was referred to her to cut her hay. She owns a farm. And come to find out he's the executive VP of a, a 75 employee company. And they had built such a strong relationship. Kelly was just extremely professional and thankful. And, you know, there was a great relationship. And she found out what he did and was able to uh, just follow up with him and, and get the meeting in just a matter of, you know, I think one, one phone call. Uh, they had a meeting and presented to pretty much all of the executives for this company and basically sold the small business plan, several personal plans, and opened up a group. Um, and we were just talking about one of our greatest successes of this year, being very new in the business, was opening up such a, a great group. And um, uh, and is very excited about the referrals to come from it because this owner of this company or this executive VP, he's extremely well connected um, and just thinks the world of Kelly because she's done a very phenomenal job of being a very strong professional in in the legal show business. So let us um, let us go out to some of these uh, amazing leaders on the line. Yeah, we, uh, we got Katie Huff. We got Katie. Yep. Um, your line's muted, Katie, but I'd love to hear from you. She's unmuted. Huh? She's unmuted. Katie, are you out there? All right, let's go to the next person. Hopefully she can get online in just a second. Michael Thompson, are you out there? You have your hand raised. Hi, Brielle. Thanks for the uh, seminar webinar today. You know, it's not a question. This just helps me in dealing with my 23-year-old son, how to help get him started. This is incredible. It's helped me. It's going to help me with him as well. Thank you so much. Absolutely, yeah. Um, definitely excited to see this. You know, the younger generation kind of rise up because we need we need some great leaders. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, let's go out to Kathy Middleton. Are you out there? Do you have any comments? Um, you amazing leader. Um. On you. You hear me? Yes. Hey, Kathy. I had to get myself off mute. Um, I just want to congratulate you on your awesome accomplishment uh, and the leadership that you're showing to all of us. It's, it's um, such a great example to be able to follow. But I think when you are so transparent with how you felt when you first started compared to how you changed your habits and what that change did for you, it makes all of us feel like, gosh, we can all do this because we recognize that um, even though you are Darcy and John's daughter, you still had to go through the same things we did, and they let you do it. I think that's phenomenal. So thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate your comments, and congratulations to you on all of your amazing success. Um, Raise your hand if you have a, a question. Um, a lot of you, so several of you have raised your hand, but you haven't put in your PIN code, so you cannot technically speak yet. Um, Joyce Hutton, you are one of those. Make sure that you put in your PIN code. Um, Lakeisha Brown, you have your hand raised. Um, Miss Lakeisha Brown, good friend of mine. What are your thoughts on the webinar this morning? You there, Lakeisha? All right, we are striking out this morning. Okay, Lakeisha, you, if you would like to talk, um, let us know. But let me go out to one of our associates here locally that I think the world of. Miss Laura Barker, I believe you are on the line and you have your hand raised. Laura, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, I, wait, wait. Laura. This is uh, yes. um, Laura Barker is part of Brielle's team, has made ED about um, her, her, you know, she just started about a year, a little over a year ago. Um, I think we were figuring out six times or more already in 2015. So I just want you all to know that Brielle, the way, what she's coaching, what she's doing, she's teaching um, her team to do, and Brielle, Brielle's success is rolling over. Um, and that, she has another new ED this month named Kayak. She has another um, platinum this month named um, Glenn. And now here's Laura, who is um, 
successful. She tried other uh, direct selling opportunities, ridiculous, no, but this coaching model has been such a compliment to her. Great success. Over to you, Laura. Okay, thanks. Um, first of all, Brielle, congratulations on your $100,000 ring. You deserve it. You work so hard. What I want to say is that the habit, the 21-day habit, if you're not doing them, you're not going to see the success that you could otherwise see. I can tell you that Brielle is a great coach, and but, but the coaching is the system. It doesn't have to be coming from Brielle herself, and that's the great thing is she teaches us how to duplicate. This webinar teaches us how to duplicate. If you will do the PDA and the Wealth Builders tracking form and all those, those tracking forms on the Shield Nation are so critical to your success. And I can tell you that I started seeing some success. I was getting very busy and I was loving it. And guess what happened? I kind of got lazy on my tracking. And then I realized my pipeline did not look like what I wanted it to look like. And that's simply because I was not holding myself accountable with this tracking on a daily basis. So I just want to thank you, um, Rail, Darcy, John, for putting all of this together for us, for Shield Nation, so that we can go to the Shield Nation website, know exactly what we need to do, and just rock it. So, and thanks. that you are, my friend. You're rocking it. So awesome job, Laura. Um, let's go out to another Laura. Laura Levitt, are you out there? You have your hand raised. Go ahead. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for this webinar. I think it's so important. It's the most important thing to me because I have been in the business three years and I have been, like Brian Crothers describes the popcorn, I start and stop and start and stop. I'm not consistent. I have, I'm, I'm so prepared it would make you ill. I've been to, I'm a meeting goer. I'm, I'm just like a classic meeting goer and I have not made the mental connection, that I'm doing the personal growth, but I feel like I'm doing everything, but at a snail's pace. So there's, there's a, for me, it's a, it's an emotional issue. It's definitely between my ears, and I really believe that this habits workbook is the key, and what's interesting is I have read it, and I have not done the exercises. So, it's just true. It's all there. Everything is right there for everybody. If we just do it, and I did, if I'm not doing it, but I thought it would, it just would be wrong of me not to compliment you and tell you what a fantastic system it is, Darcy. I, if people will just execute, it absolutely has to work. Thank you very much. Laura, I can't wait. I can't wait till you know a couple weeks from now when you start really not only reading it, but applying the principles, what happens just in every aspect of your life. So um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to call on you again, and we want to hear um, how this, uh, how the, the application side of this workbook has changed your business, because I believe that you're just a few action steps away from some huge success. So keep on going, girl. Um, another amazing leader we'll call on uh, real quick is Miss Teresa Johnson, our Coming soon, $100,000 ring earner. Is that right, Teresa? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Brielle. Excellent webinar this morning. And, you know, I have to first say I am so very proud of you. And, I mean, there's just no words to say how I feel about this very moment right now with all the success that you are having. And knowing that it's not just because you are the daughter of John and Darcy Hoffman, there's no doubt in my mind that they made you toe the road just like everybody else. And that's what makes this such an amazing moment for you in the fact that, yes, you have great mentors, as we all do, but you actually took the whole by the point and made the decision to move forward and do the things that were necessary in order for you to have the success that you have today. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for you. Uh, there, you know, the best is still yet to come. There's no doubt in my mind. In just a, you know, in a, in a short period of time or a little while longer, we're going to see you at the 250, the 500, and so forth and so on. So I see great things happening for you. But I do want to say that this is such.
so important. It takes 21 days to break a habit or to create a new habit. And, um, you know, I, I, I realize that even more because in January, my church, we always do the Daniel fast. And that's 21 days. And in 21 days, I made the decision to stop eating beef. I made the decision to get off of dairy. I made the decision to stop eating sweets. Now, you know, of course, I fell back because it was Thanksgiving. But I have had some sweets. But bottom line, it takes 21 days. But here's what I realized. Even though it takes 21 days, you've got to have the right activity in order to make those 21 days truly count. So you've got to be doing the right things, like you said, um, planting, sowing the right seeds on the right type of soil. So sometimes we're sowing seeds and we're wondering, why am I not receiving the harvest? And you got to look at the soil, and the soil may not be good. And so this is so perfect when you look at your PDA. What are you doing on a daily basis? Because that's going to dictate the success that you're looking to have. And then more importantly, you know, it's one thing to say, I want to lose weight, but to just say it and think you're going to drop 50 pounds, just like that, just doesn't happen that way. So you've got to have, you know, what are the things that you're doing every day? And you, you put it out. You know, if you want one to $2,000 a month, here are the things you need to be doing. 5000 here are the things, 10 k plus, here are the things you need to be doing it. That's important because now people have something that they can look at and they can say, okay, well, just to get a thousand, here's what I need to be doing. Am I doing that? This really forces you to look at yourself in the mirror and really be honest with yourself about where you are today versus where you can be tomorrow. It's just tweaking some things, and this allows us to tweak some things so that we can be better in 2016. Thank you so much. Back to you. Absolutely. Teresa, that's awesome. And, you know, the 21-day, um, you know, the, the prayer and fasting in January, I'll be doing that as well. And, you know, that's a great way to kick off the year. Um, so look forward to all that 2016 holds for you. Um, I'm going to go out briefly because we're getting short on time. We have a couple more people to call on to a good friend of mine, um, Mr. John Veltri. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I just want to congratulate you on your $100,000 ring. I remember that first month. I remember going to a conference with you after that first month and just how, how you know, amazing it was to see your transformation and what you've done. And, you know, thank you for your transparency because what you said today just really kicked it off for me. You said, you know, at first when I started to fill off the PDA, I didn't want to do it because I didn't have enough stuff to put on it. You know, I didn't have the activity that was going to reflect what I wanted to do in my heart, basically, but I hadn't done yet. And, and I thank you for that because certainly, you know, following one or two of these success principles will get you a little bit, but unless you follow them all and you do the system, as it's laid out, very simple for you, you're not going to have a lot of success. You might have some, some fleeting success, but it's not going to be consistent. And, uh, you know, that's something that just kind of slapped me in the face today. You have to follow the entire system. You have to do it all. And at the beginning, it may not be comfortable, but it's going to come to you. So I thank you for that because I'm in a point of rebuilding my business and trying to do what I need to do. And I'm doing part of it, but I'm not doing all of it. So that was a nice reality check for me, and I thank you for that. And I wish you nothing but the, the best success. And I can't wait to hear that you're the youngest $250,000 ring earner in the company because I know that's just around the corner. And Jill and I couldn't be more proud of you, and we're so glad to call you friends. So thank you so much. Oh, John, we love you guys so much and look forward to your success as well. And those are some great takeaways from today. Let me go out to, uh, you know, some of you, the reason why if you raised your hand if we're not calling on you is because you didn't put in your PIN code. So we can't call on you because uh, we cannot hear from you. Um, so uh, Mr. Bob Cohen, uh, one of our incredible leaders and uh, Shield Nation executive directors, do you have any comments on today's webinar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what I'm just so happy for you. So so just congratulations, Brielle. Thanks for, you know, blazing the trail. That's really what you've done here for so many people. And I really like the comments I've been hearing this morning. Uh, and it really goes back to, you know, where your awareness goes, your energy goes. And that's like what Laura was saying, you know, that there's certain things now that she can work on. And that's all of us. Um, 
thank you so much, everybody, for just bringing up the PDA. It's such a fantastic, fantastic document, especially for the part-timers. Uh, I've really had some success when I'm working with my team to show them, you know, here, you've got to work the 9 to 5. Fantastic. Put all that down. You've got church on Wednesday. Fantastic. Put that down. You've got the kids' soccer. Fantastic. Put that down. And then now you're left with all these little white little squares. Fantastic. There's where we're going to fit Legal Shield into your already busy schedule, you know, 8 to 10 hours a week. And what we do is we put in the, the telephone calls, you know, the different conference calls that the, the company has. We put in the Friday webinar. We literally schedule in and we show that associate, you know, where they can fit their Legal Shield business. And uh, it works, you guys. I'm telling you, go uh, today, go print out th this form, print out, you know, 20 copies, and go get a, a three ring binder. You know, get organized. I know it's old school, but guess what? Old school pays big. And so, again, thank you so much for bringing up this PDA. Uh, what a great webinar to, to end the year, you know, on, a, on a, just a high note, uh, again, with Brielle. And I know we had some other Shield Nation associates hit the, hit the six-figure ring. I think December's been a, an amazing month for Shield Nation. And, um, again, ladies and gentlemen, just it's all about those habits. And we get floppy. We're, we're human. But now that we know 21 days, let's just... Let's just start forming those correct habits. So um, real quick, Brielle, question for you. What's your next goal? Um, put me on the spot like that. Jeez. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, the two, I mean, the 250 ring would be next for sure. Um, Good. That, that's kind okay. Of, that's, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the next goal. So I'm, uh, hopefully, hope, hopefully 2016 will be a big, big year. So thanks for asking. Okay. All right, Thanks you got your, it. Thank you, Bob. You're awesome. Hey, real quick, we're about to wrap this up. Uh, just a few more things. We're probably going to go a few minutes over, so uh, feel free to you know, disconnect if you need to. But I uh, would like to go out to another uh, one of my fabulous team members. Um, he is, his name is Cap Stewart. He is executive director for the first time this month and just a few points away from the Cancun trip. So he'll be there next year, a couple months ago, I think back in uh, May. So, Cap, are you on the line? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Excellent. Well, yeah, just real quick, I just wanted to say, first of all, that I, I love the reminder just that, you know, manage activity and not results. It's so, it's so easy to get focused on your goals and what you want and, and ignore personal development, but personal development is key. So, it's, a, it's just a, a great thing to be reminded of. And so, so thank you for preparing to this and just helping remind us of that. Uh, but then also, I just, a, as a member of your team, I just wanted to point out to what, what everyone already knows is that, uh, I mean, sure, I'm sure you have plenty of room to grow, Brielle, but uh, you're, you're a phenomenal team leader and the amount of training and support and advocacy I received from you and how that has helped me build my business has just been absolutely phenomenal. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to publicly say that so that People know if anyone's in doubt, Brielle is a great leader, and um, and I just uh, she's a huge uh, just invested so much time and effort into helping me build my business, and it's just been a, a huge encouragement for me. So so I'm very thankful for you, and I'm very excited about 2016 and all that that has in store for for me and growing my business too. Make me want to cry over here, Cap. <laughs> <laughs> um. Thank you so much, and um, so appreciate you. And I was talking to Cap and some of our other leaders last time. We had just a small Christmas party here in Knoxville, and we were just talking about our greatest success of the year. And I, I truly believe my greatest success is just kind of the team that I've surrounded myself with because um, they've set the bar high as far as the professionalism and the customer service and the excellence that we expect of Legal Shield Associates. And um, just thinking of each of you on the line today, as we kind of close out the call, um, from the Hoffman family, and I think I speak for my parents saying this, we believe in you yeah. and we care about your dreams and your goals and the vision that you have for your future in every aspect of your life. The business is just one of them. Uh, but when it comes to the marriages and the families and the parenting and all of that, I think you know, a lot of the reason why we love doing what we do is because we get to speak into every aspect of your life, or we hope that we can. Um, and so 
let's uh, let's finish this year strong. This year is not over yet by any means. Um, a lot of you are still, you know, getting close to certain goals that you set. So don't quit now because there's a lot yet to be done. Uh, and let's really kick off the new year strong. Take time to pray and process and dream of, you know, what what. 2016, you know, can hold for you in every every area of your life, and let's set some major goals and um, some commitment to some habits, and uh, let's kick off the year strong. Uh, Mom and Dad, anything else that you'd like to add before we close it out? No, great job. Uh, Merry Christmas, blessings to everybody, and uh, uh, just awesome, awesome job, awesome webinar this morning as always. Merry Christmas, everyone, and Happy New Year. God bless. We will see you in 2016. Thank you so much.